Welcome to this Hive course on dependent actions in Gantt View. We'll be taking you on a tour on how to harness dependencies in Gantt to efficiently build out a project or program timeline. They can also be integrated to your templates for further optimization. Let's get started. The first thing we'll want to do is make sure that our workspace is set up to handle dependencies. Select Apps from the left-hand sidebar and make sure that the Dependencies app is toggled on. Now I'm going to open an example project with a set of dated and assigned actions ready to go. There are three ways to create dependencies between actions. The first option, I'm going to start building dependencies by hovering over one of my actions in the Gantt chart, selecting this dot at the end of the action and dragging it to the start of the next one. This indicates that one action can't be started until the previous one is marked complete. For option two, I'm going to show the predecessor column and type the number of the dependent action to create the link. Finally, option three, I'm going to highlight multiple rows, right click, and then link the actions together. This makes each action dependent on the previous action. You can delete a dependency by simply clicking on the linking line on the Gantt chart and hitting delete or you can clear out the data in the predecessor column. Now for more advanced dependencies, we can set a specific number of days as a lag time between one task and the next. For example, if we also send a design for review and wait up to three days for feedback, we can set a strict lag time here by typing the formula FS plus three. Different situations can have different needs for how dependencies function. Sometimes we need dependent actions to shift without updating future actions. And in some cases, changes to actions have a larger impact on the timeline as a whole. In a Hive project in Gantt layout, you can locate the auto scheduling options by going to more auto scheduling. There are three options, off, on, and strict. With auto scheduling turned off, we can adapt the dates of dependent actions without changing the rest of the timeline. As I move an action forward, this does not push the dependent action forward. They are linked together, but not dictating each other's dates. With auto scheduling turned on, as timelines shift and delays occur, dependent actions will shift with them. However, let's say you're working ahead and you move a task earlier in your timeline. Shifting the due date here will have no impact on the other dates. But if we need to push this date out into the future, dependent actions will come with them. So for example, if a team member is working ahead in their schedule and doesn't want to impact the other areas of the timeline, this setting would allow them to pull an action forward that is ready to be worked on without affecting the rest of the project. With auto scheduling set to strict, you cannot have any lag in your timeline that is not expressly written into the predecessor column formula. This is sometimes also referred to as ASAP scheduling, meaning the Gantt will always snap your plan to finish as soon as possible. Again, unless you tell it some lag is okay. Let's try this out. Let's add an FS plus two formula to one of our dependencies and shift it forward. As you can see, this maintains the lag we have programmed. But if I pull a date earlier, the entire plan will also shift it backwards. See how the plan is always snapping? Hive is trying to help you complete this as soon as possible. That's what strict scheduling will do for you. Now we've covered the three types of auto scheduling options, and you can start trying out these dependencies to see how they can work for you. You can also keep any dependencies that are consistent parts of your process within your action and project templates when you save a project as a template or you save an action card as an action template. Lastly, we'll cover a couple of advanced options for using dependencies. For our project managers who like to use different types of dependencies such as start to start, finish to finish, start to finish, just enter the code into the predecessor column. So for instance, SS for start to start or you can drag the start of one action to the start of another to create such a link. A 
A final tip is that your preferred auto scheduling option can be saved in your workspace settings. So head to your settings and scroll down to the auto scheduling option. Select your preferred option so that any new projects are started with this option set. Thank you for joining this lesson on dependencies in Gantt. Tune into our next video in the series to complete your learning on everyday essentials.